So Paul, in our previous conversation, you talked about your books and I want to mention one of them. So in 2019, as the first bestseller in Amazon management skills and job interviewing categories, your book 96 great interview questions to ask before you hired is now in its third edition and still as a bestseller. So what can you tell about the book and how can leaders or recruiters benefit from this? That is a very good question, Meher. Okay, so I wrote the book when I was in the search world doing executive search. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was transitioning into corporate human resources. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of both sides of the desk. Mm -hmm. So I was able to kind of bring both perspectives to the book. Mm -hmm. And, and the idea for me is what's most important is really, again, coaching, interviewing. And I, I, I tell managers, don't get thrown off. I'm not telling you you have to be a career coach for every person that you meet, but you have to, have to ask certain questions to really understand who the person is, what's important to them, and so that they can make themselves vulnerable in, in, in a healthy sense. When a candidate says, Meher, I don't normally say this in an interview, but then you know you're getting the real candidate. Forget all the hype and, you know... Yeah. So, so the reality is I ask candidates and I recommend that managers spend five minutes, but you know, what are the criteria that you're using in selecting your next job or company? What's important to you at this point in your career? Or what would have to change at your current company for you to continue staying? And my favorite question is, I know you don't know enough about this job yet, mm -hmm. but you have an idea of what it is. Just initially, tell me your thoughts. If you were to accept this job, how would you explain it to a prospective employer three to five years from now? In other words, how would this job make sense in terms of your career progression and your career development? Mm -hmm. The reason why those kinds of questions are really, really important to add to your interview is because so many times it feels like the employer wants the candidate to fit the company's needs. Yeah. If you're a wise employer, you have to make sure it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure you're, you're meeting the candidate's needs. And the candidate's impression is, wow, no one's ever asked me these questions before. It's very selfless in terms of how they do that. Again, selfless leadership. Yeah. But the reality becomes the candidate's going to walk away and say, this company is into professional development. I like that. No one else seems to do that out there. And, you know, it could be a big swing factor in terms of, well, I've got two offers or two and a half offers. Which one do I take? I want the one where I connected the most with the interviewer who's going to be my boss. But we all know that sometimes those criteria or selection uh, points are already established and sometimes it comes from the corporate they need to have those ticks so how can as a leader you can be adjusting and we also know that these days diversity and inclusion is very important and they want to include it but maybe it's not in their checkbox so how can leaders be more flexible well it all depends a lot of times the recruitment is dictated by corporate Sometimes companies are very compliance driven. You must ask these exact questions to every candidate and you may not, you know, yes. I don't really recommend that. I, I think you lose the personality. You, you, you shouldn't be interviewing to avoid a lawsuit. You should be interviewing to hire the best talent for the job. Mm -hmm. And part of that is to establish trust with a candidate right from the get go. Mm -hmm. And I think a candidate can tell a lot about who you are by the questions that you ask. And if you're sitting there reading a checklist of 52 questions, by the time you're done, A, the interviewer, you're exhausted. B, you don't know this candidate any more than when the person started and sat down with you because it feels very, very arm's length. It feels artificial. It doesn't feel like they tried to listen to me or get to know me. Mm -hmm. So again, my answer here is it's fine for you to have an idea of if a company wants you to use a checklist. You can't tell them no, that's, that's their rule but you also should have the flexibility to add these types of questions if that is something that you believe in. Personally, I do believe that career growth and professional development is important to everyone I interview. And I wanna give them a little bit of an audience, so to speak. I wanna give them the stage to tell me what's important to them at this point in their career.